Hi everyone, I'm Mark Apsey and I'm current chair of ICME's Energy Centre and I'm joined today by Alana Collis, ICME's Learning Society and Policy Manager, to outline really some more information on ICME's Climate Change Position Statement, which was published in December last year. Hi everyone, um, thank you Mark. So can we just um, outline, Mark, for us, everyone, why is the issue of climate change important and why now? Well, I think probably everybody knows and has read about the issue of climate change and it is one of the grand challenges we face right now with the possibility of extreme and irreversible consequences if we don't act. At the start of 2020, the Board of Trustees asked for ICME to produce a position on climate change and I think the reason for the timing, which is what you've asked, is that it's generally accepted, I think, that the 2020s is a crucial decade to address emissions, to mitigate and adapt to climate change if we're going to be successful. And the Learning Society Committee asked ICME's Energy Centre to lead this task, which, which we agreed to do. Uh, so the first thing we did was we established a task group with a core writing team and a wider team of diverse members from around the world and across different sectors and areas of expertise. In total, we had 16 members from seven different countries and representing eight different special interest groups on the team. And together, we came up with our first task, which was really to think about and think through how to produce a statement that would represent our views collectively and what it should be based on. So to do that, we started off by drafting some principles initially, and these were shared with the leadership of all the special interest groups and the regional groups across ICME to get some early feedback. In parallel to that, the task group also considered what the statement should mean for ICME as a whole and what actions and commitments we might take as a result of the statement. So having got the principles and having got some thoughts on commitments, we pulled together a draft position statement, which we then went to share more widely through a consultation. And Alana, I wonder if you'd outline the process we went through in terms of that. Yes, thanks, Mark. So the consultation was open to all members of ICME um, for just under six weeks and they were asked we asked them to consider each of the principles in turn the context um, of the document and the commitments that were stated within it so it was quite a detailed consultation um, we got a, we received a response from almost 500 members across 31 countries and over 84 percent of members supported things like uh, the alignment with the 2015 Paris Agreement and the need to keep global average temperature rises to below one and a half degrees Celsius um, since pre-industrial levels. Um, it was recognised that it was a global issue that affects everyone and chemical engineers should um, minimise their adverse, any adverse impact and not shift impact elsewhere. This principle aligns with the UN Sustainable Development Goals um, and it received over 85% support. In terms of specific technical expertise and the application of chemical engineering, the systems thinking, innovation and use of best available techniques all received strong support over 80%. However, it was acknowledged that to realise this, the principles of education, training and application skills are absolutely essential. Hello, it's fantastic to receive that level of support, I think, for the, the draft statement when it was published. And all of those things are important. And I think the training aspect you raise is important too in terms of the way it applies to both the current and future workforce but not just the technical aspects of that but also the need to train in social responsibility and ethics associated with what we're doing and we make reference to these in the principles. Thanks Mark, yes and in addition we also asked Congress to consider the statement and they advised ICME uh, we must ensure that any commitments we make are, are realistic and deliverable that ICME should not identify with any political movement and you know we it's important we understand this and the document is a policy statement it's not a political affiliation in the statement the context of this is quite clear um ICME may comment on policy matters including those that relate to climate change um but our responses to these will always be based on evidence and will be non-partisan well that's right it's important it's a policy statement um and it's not partisan and in setting out the context and commitments in the statement it's also important to really note that the actions we've come up with and suggested in the statement are not just for ICME alone or for members in isolation, but that we've got to collectively do this together. And ICME and its members will need to work together and with wider stakeholders as well to identify and develop the tools, the training and the support for members to implement these principles and these commitments. And I think in this way, we really truly can help society tackle this grand challenge of climate change. So what's next? How are we going to get started on this, Alana? 
Well, when the Board of Trustees um, approved the statement in November 2020, they also approved the formation of two working groups. The first of these will work across all of ICME to review the commitments and um, set some high level action plans to develop these. They won't deliver all these action plans themselves as one working group. This will then cascade to other areas within ICME. It'll go to things like our qualifications committee um, and the education accreditation forum, that the qualification space of ICME. It'll also go and ask special interest groups and regional groups and other knowledge groups such as the Energy Centre or as, as it now is the Energy Community of Practice to you know, support and deliver some um, relevant projects aligned with this. The second group will lead and advise the Board of Trustees on how ICME can work towards achieving net zero emissions, um, carbon emissions from our direct operations by 2025. Um, so we'll have a different remit. And we're currently um, in January 2021, we're working towards um, term, draft terms of reference for those two groups. Well, that's great. So the first steps are really in place to establish these groups um, as we start 2021. And I'd really urge and I think we collectively Alana, urge members to read the statement if you haven't already, which you can find on ICME's website, along with some further information that's available in the article in the December and January edition of the Chemical Engineer magazine. I would personally like to take this opportunity to really thank all of you that have given up your time in 2020 to contribute to this important initiative. And if you would like to get involved with any of the task groups and working groups that Alana's mentioned above, then please engage. You can get involved through your regional group, through your special interest groups or get in touch directly with us at the Energy Centre or as now is the Energy Community of Practice um, because there's so much work that we've got to do together. Thank you. Thank you Mark for taking the time to go through this with us and the hard work for you and the task group. As you said it's an important decade for climate change and ICME has a really central role to play in this. Thank you very much.